So next, I think it's uh, Professor Mark Rutter from uh, Harper Adams talking on behalf of EpiAgri. Uh, it's it's AgriEpi. The Epi stands for Engineering, Precision and Innovation. So uh, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Mark, for a very good introduction, I think, to this, this whole process that the, the government set up, uh, what, three years ago now to try and establish these sort of centres for innovation. I'm actually standing in for Dave Ross. He is the CEO of AgriEpi. He's going to be here tomorrow, I understand, actually talking about some of the technologies that we can use uh, in terms of improving production efficiency within the beef industry. Uh, but I've, he asked me really to just to give a, a sort of a broad overview of where we see sort of AgriEpi fitting in to tell you a bit about it. Uh, and then hopefully we can discuss how we're going to be working together with the other centres. Now I think given that int excellent introduction, I'll actually skip that slide uh, and just really move on to what the, the government was trying to establish or what the aims were when they set up these new centres. Uh, and it's very much about trying to improve economic performance in farming through really getting a much better uptake of new technologies, knowledge and practices. It's about recreating leadership within the industry uh, and joining up the excellence that is already out there, helping people work together to try and deliver. Uh, again, it's about getting science into practice, as Mark was saying. Uh, and again, no one part of the industry can really solve this on its own, so it's about working together to resolve these challenges uh, and looking for ways of bringing about sort of transformation, transformation, transformational change within the, within the sector. Just to give you some idea of the scale of, of the challenge, uh, this slide illustrates the sort of predicted growth over the next 10 years or thereabouts uh, in terms of the various agricultural sectors. Uh, and Dave's highlighted, he put these slides together, highlighted meat and dairy within that. So we can see in the developed world, we're looking at about a 10% increase, but in the rest of the world, we're looking somewhere between 20 and 30% increase uh, in productivity, really, to meet that increased uh, demand for consumption. And we're starting from quite a high point. This just shows you the, uh, the numbers of animals that are killed each year. We're talking about, what, 300 million cattle, uh, 1.3 billion pigs, and an absolutely staggering 58 billion poultry killed each year. So we're already starting at a high point, so we need to obviously find ways of, in, of increasing the efficiency of production. So what is AgriEpi? Uh, well, we're one of these new innovation centres. Uh, it's a research and development centre. We're also about demonstration and training, uh, and we're very much interested within the AgriEpi uh, Agri centre about precision agriculture and engineering. But it's very much to service right across the agricultural industries, livestock, arable, horticulture, and aquaculture. So we, we sort of straddle all of the various sectors. In terms of who's behind it, again, this is also an industry-led centre. The major industry players or the main sort of partners behind uh, establishing the centre are Harborough, Kingshay, and AgSpace. And the major academic providers within that are SRUC, Harper Adams, and Cranfield. But we have about 70 to 80 other uh, companies who are actually uh, uh, engaging with us in terms of trying to help deliver this vision. And we'll talk about some of those a little bit later on. So in terms of how we're going to interact with business, well, we, we're establishing innovation hubs. Again, this, this is helping industry to get access to the leading uh, ac academic institutions. It's about establishing facilities where we can conduct research and development, demonstration, training. We also have some key capital equipment that can be used on projects, equipment that small companies may not be able to afford themselves, but they can buy access to equipment to help them understand perhaps some of the challenges uh, that they face. It's about bringing together researchers, industry, and also funding, working with government to help sort of co-fund projects in these areas. We also have incubation facilities, so startup companies can come along, work with us in terms of helping. Uh, we can help them get their products uh, uh, actually delivered uh, uh, to market. We're also looking at putting instrumentation into commercial farms and processing sites so we can better understand what's going on in the industry, uh, so we can actually capture data uh, help us identify some of the challenges that are already going on within the industry uh, and help us find ways of really demonstrating these new technologies to farmers actually out on farm. So some of the companies we're working with are working with Digital Globe in terms of capturing satellite information, 
We're working with uh, other companies in terms of uh, developing drones. We've got various animal sensing technologies. We're actually working with F1 Williams. Uh, it's not that we're trying to make tractors quicker, but they're really good at instrumentation. They can get data, they can process that real time from those uh, uh, Formula One cars. And it's about using their technology, their expertise, in terms of helping us get data uh, process very quickly so that we can actually uh, use it real time uh, when we're actually making decisions out on the farm. Now the challenge we face out on farm is there's a lot of variance. Uh, we've, the, the biological material that forms the animals and crops that we farm uh, has over millions and billions of years undergone natural selection. Natural selection requires variability so it's sort of programmed into our animals and our plants that they're variable. That, that comes a challenge when we're trying to actually farm them. And this sort of illustrates the wide range we can get in terms of, uh, this is beef in terms of the, the age of the animal and the, uh, the sort of carcass weight. We've got a huge spread here. And it's about understanding, well, why are some farms managing to achieve uh, high weights over a very short period of time? And why are some of them down here? Again, it is all about efficiency. We need to make sure we've got more efficient production. But if we can actually measure what's going on, we can get a better understanding. And then the figure at the bottom illustrates uh, the sort of spatial variability we can get in fields. In this case, it's broccoli. But it's the same idea, whether it's animals or crops. It's about managing variability, variance, and finding ways to improve production efficiency. So we're using a range of sensors, uh, IoT, uh, the Internet of Things, the idea that we can have lots of smart connected sensors out there monitoring what's going on. We're seeing increased use of robotics and automation. This slide illustrates some of the examples from uh, sort of crop systems. But we're using robotics in milking. We're all familiar, obviously, with robotic milking systems, with systems for measuring behavior, sensors on animals to tell us when they're in estrus. We're now looking at things that are developing uh, health alerts as well, uh, even things like room and boli to give us a much better idea what's going on within the animal. So we are, uh, we're working with companies across all of these areas uh, and again, helping them work together to try and get their kit talking better to each other to improve uh, communication between them uh, and hopefully make this, the systems more reliable, more efficient. So we are backed by industry. Uh, industry are sort of engaged with us. We've got over 100 industrial partners now from agricultural engineering companies, uh, retailers, uh, supply chain companies, we've got quite a lot of small agri-tech companies uh, engaged with us as well, as well as supply companies. Uh, we also have, again, the non-sort of sector technology companies, the likes of F1 Williams, who are looking for new opportunities to use their technology in other areas, and farmers. We're very much engaging with farmers in terms of understanding what your needs are as well. If we look at the, uh, the global market, in terms of just precision agriculture, uh, it's nearly $8 billion per year, or it's predicted to be $8 billion per year by 2020. That's a sort of compound growth of about 15% per year. And in terms of the agricultural engineering market, it's currently nearly $100 billion. So it's a, it's a huge industry. Uh, but again, there's lots of opportunities still out there to, to try and make sure that we're, we're really making the most of this technology. So in terms of a centre of excellence, we have national coverage. Uh, we're working with sort of links with industry. We have the hubs are based at SRUC, Harper, Adams and Cranfield. Associated with that are numerous uh, other organisations that we're working with in terms of providing uh, expertise. We have satellite innovation facilities. Uh, we've also got mobile laboratories so we can actually go out to farm and actually measure some of the things you wouldn't routinely measure on farm. We can actually go and the labs can carry out those analyses. We have the incubation facilities, hopefully incubating new startup companies. And we include within that training and dissemination facilities so we can help uh, really engage with the industry. Uh, again, it's very much about KE, knowledge exchange, talking to farmers, understanding what their challenges are, and trying to find ways that we can, uh, we can address those. So in terms of hubs themselves, we, we're working with one of the other centers. The only center that isn't here is CHAP, which is the Crop Health and Protection. So we are working with them in terms of a national soil test facility. We've got incubation facilities, uh, precision livestock uh, systems in terms of sensor systems. We're working with companies to deliver those. We've got lots of imaging systems uh, in terms of looking at uh, animals as well as soil, hyperspectral uh, imaging, working to develop robotic systems. 
controlled atmosphere for crop storage, meat quality, again working throughout the supply chain and again trying to make sure we've got these facilities in place for knowledge exchange. Uh, and the pictures illustrate, I think this is the centre at Cranfield, this is the hub that's being established at Harper Adams and then there's a, a facility going up uh, in Edinburgh. Within the centre we have the dairy development centres. Now these are very much dedicated to obviously to looking at uh, bringing the technology into the dairy industry. They're based in Scotland, Shropshire and Somerset. One of the key things we're working uh, with with industry there is looking at new options around housing, potentially smart housing, new sensor uh, uh, options as well. Uh, robotic milking features within all of these uh, systems. Um, this just illustrates the Harper Adams unit. This was taken a while ago where we're sort of hoping that our new unit will be up and running in the summer uh, and hopefully you'll get to see it at some point uh, in the not too distant future. We have satellite farms spread across the country. Again, they're very much monitoring what's going on at the farm level so we can try and get some understanding of the variability both within farms and between farms. Uh, and again, it's bringing this data together. Uh, we're going to be linking with the other centres, certainly agrimetrics, in terms of bringing uh, this, this data together and trying to understand it across the entire country. Uh, and again, it's very much about working to try and understand uh, this, this, uh, the variability in the data uh, across these various uh, satellites. We're working, uh, as well as being a national centre, we're obviously looking at international opportunities. So there are lots of opportunities in China, India and the Far East in terms of really updating the technology that they're using. Uh, there's also a lot of interest in terms of, of bringing precision really to look at uh, sustainable intensification within those countries, but also looking at the environmental impact. Uh, South America is really interested in precision livestock farming. Central Asia, it's much about the uh, modernization of machinery. Uh, but we have links within Africa, Europe, North America, Australia, New Zealand, through the companies that we work with. So it's very much about networking, bringing this network together of national and uh, international industry members, uh, working together to try and really get the sort of latest instrumentation uh, out there, using data on real farms to help us understand what's going on. So in terms of funding and support, you know, we're working uh, at both a UK, European uh, and global level with various projects. Uh, the idea is that we can use the infrastructure that we're putting in to help support project activity. Uh, the centre can also work to bring together industry members and the appropriate academics. Uh, and then together we can hopefully develop and market sort of new precision technologies uh, looking at also real-time uh, data processing to understand exactly what's going on. In terms of our initial activity, we have uh, work going on in terms of looking at uh, identifying uh, pig welfare, precision soil mapping, uh, remote sensing opportunities in livestock farming management. Uh, we're also looking at uh, sort of sensing around further development of sensors around precision livestock monitoring. And we've got many more sort of projects uh, in the pipeline. So that sort of summarises what AgriEpi is about. Uh, again, Dave Ross is the CEO. You'll get the opportunity to talk to him uh, tomorrow. He'll be speaking tomorrow, and I'll join the AgriTech panel uh, a little bit later on, and we can discuss how we'll work together. So thank you for your attention. Thanks.